Hello, and welcome to the second conversation in a series surrounding Health Board Foundation's new direction. I announced in September that we aim to become a national model for health equity through economic equity and inclusion. In my last conversation, I sat down with Jeff Jolly, the executive director of the Local Initiative Support Corporation, or LISC. If you missed it, it's in the archives waiting for you to watch. In this conversation, I sat down with Mayor Q, also known as Mayor Quentin Lucas of Kansas City, Missouri. I wanted to learn more about how Kansas City is addressing anti-racism through city policies. He not only shared what they're doing in city community policies, but also internally within City Hall administrative policies. And now, please enjoy my conversation with Mayor Q. Thank you so much for your leadership through COVID. Uh, we really appreciate you making the tough calls that are in the best interest of the health and well-being of our community. Well, I figured it was always important to listen to our medical professionals, to listen to good health advice, to do what was the best interest for the public. And so just following those steps has, has really left us in good stead compared to a lot of other American cities. Yeah, I agree. Well, job well done. And I know we're, we're still in it and still going. So uh, today, you know, we want to sit down and talk with you about how the city of Kansas City is addressing anti-racism through policymaking. Mm -hmm. uh, this issue is very important to Health Forward Foundation. Uh, as you know, racism is indeed the predominant determinant of health for people of color who, to a large degree, well before COVID, experienced racism as a public health crisis, right, in our daily lives. So that's the frame for our conversation today. Sound good? That's good. I'm happy to talk. Okay. Well, before we jump straight into the essence of that, um, from your vantage point, what are some of the key social factors impacting health in our region? Well, you know, as you noted, racism, the legacy of it and its daily existence, I think lead to a lot of the, the health issues we see every day in Kansas City. Um, the disproportionately early deaths that we see in dis and zip codes that are predominantly African-American. Heart, heart disease is one leading cause. We see other ailments uh, that are often avoidable um, through different uh, either social methods or, or types of cuisine. Um, we also still see for our children in too many situations, lead exposure that leads to lifelong illnesses. And so those are just a few of the things we see. I, I really see an access issue, making sure people can get regular checkups, making sure our policies help support regular health care and understanding that when we talk about funding, doing things that are just one off are interesting, a, you know, a, a program somewhere where you're giving something out. Mm -hmm. But what we really need for more of our community is a way that they can get a long term relationship with health. It doesn't have to be with one provider, but it does have to be with, hey, look out for yourself, care about yourself. You know, I'll, I'll say something very different, but for a few years, I taught in a, a maximum security prison. And whether they were from a city or a rural town, black, white, Latino, I'd ask so many, uh, you know, have you been to the doctor? And they would say, last time I went was when I was eight years old. Wow. And interesting how so many things really start to combine to lead to so many of our societal challenges. We need to find a better way to get more access for our community. And, and those are just a few of the things that I think make a difference for us. Yeah, well, you certainly have a, a really strong grounding in some of the structural factors that you talked about. I appreciate you highlighting the issue with mortality uh, and shorter life expectancy that we have. So for our viewers, it's important for them to know that there's about a 15 and a half year shorter life expectancy between 64112 on the plaza and 64128 in Center City. We also see that in different portions of our region and you talked about quality foods and the cuisine that you mentioned, uh, and you talked about a few other structural factors, and all of those things are shaped by policy uh, at the end of the day from a systems perspective. So um, I love the fact that you're thinking at the systems level in terms of how all of these things ultimately <laughs> shape our outcomes uh, and our life expectancy and, and, and morbidity and mortality. So. Next thing, um, we know that, like we just talked about, racism leads to these negative health, health outcomes. In 2019, the council passed a resolution committing to a comprehensive assessment of the city's interracial policies and procedures to address public health disparities. We call them health injustices. We think it's more fitting. Where does that work stand today? 
you know, a few different things on, on health injustices and racial disparities. I think we've had, uh, I'll be honest, kind of fits and starts. Um, we have had some conversations about the work that we want to do. Some of those have been with the Health Board Foundation, but I think more to the point, we are trying to find a way, and I commend your organization for this, how do we make sustainable change? We can't just, you know, say resolved. We care about things. And I, I say this, by the way, to a lot of folks in American business all the time, too. We saw a lot of messages and tweets and all of that during 2020, particularly the summer, where people said, oh, we're going to look at new and how we can do better. I want to make sure in 2021, 2022, it continues to be supported and carried on. So at the city, what we're trying to do is, first of all, make sure that we have race equity and anti-racism, rooting that out, and something that we do in everything at City Hall. Really seeing our policies, our budgets, our, our planning through a, a race equity type of lens. And so mm -hmm. that really one step that I think is important. The other thing, and, and I know there will be listeners of all types of different backgrounds, um, it is sure that at City Hall and, and here and in our conversations too, we understand where we can do better. You know, I am a black man raised in Kansas City. There are a lot of things though that I need to learn. Much of what my experience is, is frozen in somebody who went through my steps in life. Mm -hmm. And what I always try to say to my uh, non-minority brothers and sisters is that this isn't an attack, although sometimes it's necessary. This is instead saying, look, where can you do better? And every time, for example, there's a snowstorm in Kansas City, people don't just call and say, Lucas, you did great. Instead, they say, you missed this street or that street. Right. It doesn't mean I missed every street. It means, however, that their neighborhood street was missed. In the same way, with when we're talking about anti-racism, there are things where we have blind spots. I, I was somebody who grew up knowing the Tomahawk Chop at Arrowhead Stadium. I don't think it's appropriate now. Mm -hmm. That didn't mean I was a bad kid. I had a bad childhood or had bad parenting. What it just meant is we learn, we grow, we do better. And that's what more of this community needs to do along the way. And that's what we're really trying to uh, integrate into every decision made at City Hall. Yeah, it's so good to hear you say because um, equity is something that we have to practice with a great deal of resolve and intention. But just like a physician practices medicine, uh, all the, most times they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. We have to practice equity and it's a competency at the end of the day. Uh, that we have to be really intentional about. So you mentioned anti-racism. And one thing that I've learned as a part of this journey is that we really have to pay attention to words because everyone's not on the same page of that. Uh, so anti-racism to health forward really is, or racism is really about um, a system of power and resources that advance uh, white people while oppressing others from those opportunities for around power, money, and resources. And anti-racism is the opposite, where everyone is advanced uh, through policies. You have been really intentional um, about a few policies that I think do that, contribute to anti-racism and bake equity in. Can you speak about some of those? You know, there are a few, um, and I'll, I'll kind of divide them in separate areas. One uh, relates to housing. The other relates to our criminal justice system. I think that if anyone looks to the criminal justice system in Kansas City and in America, um, the inequities are stark. I mean, it is amazing in Kansas City, Missouri. And by the way, uses of, let's say, marijuana are consistent across the races. Black men and black women are four times more likely to be arrested, incarcerated for such an offense. Now, I know I have health people listening to me. This doesn't mean that we're saying use narcotics or anything of that sort, but we're saying, wow, when we look at the drug war, so much of the discussion when we saw black people being villainized was bigger jails, more incarceration, more enforcement. Whereas when we've seen more white folks being users, we've talked about um, substance abuse treatment. We've talked about new ways to fight the opioid epidemic. And by the way, I'm all about that. I think that is vital. And I think what we've seen in the American experience and in the Kansas City experience is things like diversion from criminal sentencing, things like wraparound services if you find yourself in need, things like not just throwing the book at somebody and putting them in jail, but instead saying these are alternative opportunities and this is consistent and sustained treatment have made a world of difference. So that's what I've always supported. You know, when I first became mayor, I had a colleague who said, we need to build a bigger jail. And I said, well, you know what? A mayor in Kansas City has not used a veto pen in a long time, but that will be the one. <laughs> 
I will always be against it. It doesn't make things better. Instead, I think it perpetuates challenges. So that, that's one. Another area that I've worked on does relate to housing and how can we provide more quality, affordable housing? You know, it's sometimes, and uh, I know Kiana, myself, a lot of folks, we, we grew up with real lives. And oftentimes when you're growing up, you don't even realize that something isn't normal. Right. You know, what I didn't realize was uh, that the heat's supposed to work at our house, the windows aren't supposed to be broken, that all these things, I was like, oh, that's just because we got a raggedy superintendent to say, you know, uh, you know, is instead, right, something that is, uh, needs to be fixed, needs to be addressed. So we've stepped up for tenants' rights. We've stepped up for making sure there are more inspections of uh, our, our homes, particularly homes that have young people. And more to the point, we're stepping up to try to make sure we provide more access to quality housing. There's been much discussion in Kansas City about unhoused populations, those experiencing homelessness. We're trying to make sure that we hit both ends, those who have sustained periods of homelessness and those who find themselves struggling each and every month who may find themselves in a situation where they're temporarily or for a short term experiencing homelessness. We're looking to build policies that address both of those. I'm real proud. Of them. And then finally, I know I'm giving long winded answers. Now you're zero, zero fair transit, um, giving the opportunity to make sure that more people can get money back in their pocket, that we can support the bus system, that we can enhance ridership, that we can invest in our community. I love streetcar as much as the next guy, but I'll tell you what, a whole bunch of people ride the bus, a whole bunch of people need access to where they need to go. This is allowing us to free up opportunities for all of them. I love it. And, and thank you for leading in these areas. Um, our target population are those who oftentimes live in marginalized conditions, areas and communities where uh, that have experienced disinvestment, they're uninsured, uh, and uh, what we call underserved. Uh, and they are more than likely to be impacted by unsafe, unstable, unaffordable housing. Uh, also, the lack of access to transportation, which, by the way, is one of the number one barriers to health care. So it's a direct health care issue. Transportation is also a workforce development issue. It's a community development issue. It's a child care issue. So as we think about our core mission, uh, which is to provide leadership, advocacy and resources that eliminate barriers to health and promote quality health, all those factors you mentioned eliminate barriers to health. Uh, the housing, the transit, and even the adverse uh, penalties when interacting with law enforcement for things like marijuana. So thank you for focusing on the right things. Those are core uh, to our mission. Administratively, Brian Platt is on as our new city manager. How might you apply and work with him to focus on racial equity internally within uh, the city's policies? There is so much that we need to do. Um, and and where do I even start? Because, you know, even Brian's hiring was kind of interesting. He is a white man. Uh, he's from New Jersey. And I know there were many who questioned, all right, well, how, how does he advance uh, anti-racism? How does he advance some of our equity goals when by background he doesn't present it? And those are a few questions I asked him fairly directly, both during the interview process and stuff that we pushed since. The answers were this. One, it is how you actually build accountability in an institution. Kansas City, Missouri before has had one permanent black uh, city manager. We've had two influence. And in those situations, I think we saw the environment improve. We saw recognition. But what we didn't see was a change on the departmental level. We didn't see how public works was actually integrating better uh, hiring processes, better promotion processes. And let's be real here, better respect processes, because probably about 80 percent of our workers, the workers, workers who are out there every street, every day on the streets are black. Too much of our management was white. How do we start to say you're promoting new managers, you're promoting new people to different roles? And I challenge Mr. Platt with that and a few things I'm proud of. He's appointed a new uh, director of public works who's a black gentleman, a new director of general services, a black woman. He's making other changes in departmental leadership that I think recognizes the diversity that our community has. More female directors of departments, something that Kansas City has struggled with for a long time. To me, that's what being in that position is about. And, you know, I'll be real. I want to make sure whoever it is that is in these roles to do it is making that level of difference. So if you're somebody, you know, if you're a black mayor who's not caring about promotion and change, then I don't know if I want you. I want somebody who's always looking for those things. And those have been, that's one of the key steps. But the other step that I think is important, which Kansas City has traditionally failed at, and uh, we've been doing it for years, we have all of these legal settlements that tell us, huh, 
There's something wrong with your culture. You know, if there is a, a five part expose about your fire department having trouble, what you shouldn't do is just shake your head at the end and say, oh, well, you know, that's just the way it is. What you shouldn't do every year is say we pay out about $10 million in settlements a year because of race and sex discrimination suits. What our city manager has already started is a departmental review of each department, requirements for regular checking back and consultation with city council, hiring outside agencies to get us to change, and then promising to terminate more of those supervisors that have been at the core of these problems. I wanted the city manager because we wanted to have action. We wanted to see change. We wanted to see something that Kansas City hasn't done enough, which is to say, we're messing up, but we're gonna do better. And you can test us next year, a decade from now, et cetera. And that's the way that I think we start to make these changes long-term and there's more. And figuring out how each and every one of your steps, how you're not just building a parking garage downtown, but you're redirecting funds from something that may be a more equitable use. We need that in more policies, and I'm glad that our city administration and I think our next budget will look at that more than in my years on city council previously. That is great to hear. Well, you know, we are undergoing a racial equity journey ourselves, uh, and it has to start internal uh, before we can begin to make considerable movement in the community. So all of those factors that you're looking at, HR, hiring practices, also looking at gender equity. I applaud you for that. We need more women leaders. Uh, in those ranks uh, in the city, as well as the legal landscape uh, and understanding what there is to learn from a race equity lens from those legal matters is really, really important. Um, so thank you for sharing all of those details uh, and thank you for working to be the change internally that the community needs to see in, in, our, in our external policies. Last question, uh, how might philanthropy, uh, including foundations, private funders, uh, corporate funders support the city's racial equity work? You know, I should say something about giving the city money or whatever else, but I would say step one, do it yourselves, right? Make sure your organizations are this. I got so many calls um, around the time of the protest from well-meaning individuals that said, Mayor, what can X or Y organization do to help? And then I just kind of, you know, scratched my head and said, well, what are you doing in your own organization? What are you doing in your organization? And, and look, I will never say promise somebody a job, but what are you doing to empower people? Empower people to be their best, to make them feel like they belong in that organization. You know, I'm a lawyer by training and I've been affiliated with some of the city's finest law firms. And too many times I, would, I still go to visit these places. I see no black partners or I see one or two. I see no real opportunities where that black mid-level associate uh, is getting the same type of relational opportunities as others. That to me is the thing. And you need to understand it is not a one fell swoop type thing. I agree. I get into these sorts of challenges with one quick decision and we won't get out of them with that. So what that means is yes. And I see this every day as mayor, you're going to show up and people are going to tell you what you did wrong and you need to listen and you need to come back for more and you need to keep coming back. You know, it is the most amazing thing for me, even in groups that did not like me. And there are still some groups that do not like me. But if, I, <laughs> but if I keep showing up, they're like, Dang. you know what? Let me give you one quick example. Um, during the summer, I got a group of recallers that just hated everything that I did. Uh, and they accused me of being racist against white people, which is interesting. And, uh, you know, but I went to a meeting and it was in the Northland. And they said, this is how we're feeling. And I said, all right. This is where I am. I, I don't agree with you on this. This is why I do things the way I do. I went, I met again, I met again. And I don't know if they like me, but they respect that I respected them. When you hear black and brown voices, LGBTQ voices saying we want respect, that's what we're talking about. I don't actually want you to give me anything. I just want you to respect me like a man, respect me like a you know, person who's a woman, respect anybody who's just there saying, I am talented. Don't look to me as something less than. Look to my community challenges. Look to all of these issues as things that you are a part of. You know, there is not a there's not an east side that's like different, right? If you live in Mission Hills, you're in the same part of the ecosystem that is contributing to some of the disparities we have now. And those are the sorts of things and that viewpoint that we need to get changed. I love it. Well, I heard you say two two big things and all that. You gave an invitation to our corporate, civic, nonprofit, business, governmental uh, partners and stakeholders 
to be the change first, to begin to do the hard work internally of racial equity. And I think that takes looking at policies, practices, procedures. So thank you for that charge. We are certainly on a journey. There's no quick sprint here. And we are also inviting our community partners and stakeholders to do the same thing. The other thing that's really key to philanthropy is listening and engaging. We're in an extremely polarizing time in our, in our climate in this country and in this city even, as you mentioned. So listening and engaging and taking all of that heat and flame out the room helps. So thank you so much for all that you're doing. Anything else you want our viewers to know? You know, what I uh, appreciate you all for is that you understand how social determinants of health lead to so much in our society. You understand um, why the hard work and the things that aren't always quick press releases um, really make a difference. So I, I appreciate you for walking with us hand in hand as we do change this community. Another thing I will say, and yeah, we had 176 homicides last year. We've had hundreds of people die of COVID, uh, but we keep working to build a better day and brighter days in our community and we never give up. And I ask you to never give up on our community. Yeah, we won't. We'll keep practicing together. That's what it takes, equity practitioners. Thank you, Mayor, so much for sitting down with me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Right. Take care.